name is Robert Mason, and I'm the author of the book, The Higher Cause, which is available now on Amazon. It's not my intention to have a successful YouTube channel or from my book to become a bestseller. Uh, I, I do this to keep a record of what I've experienced in regards to unidentified flying objects, UFOs. If I had to give a reason why the UFOs would go out of their way to interact with myself on a up close and personal level, it would, it would most likely be because they knew I would dedicate myself and much of my life doing all I could to open the world's eyes to the truth. Even though most of the experiences I've had are very rare and quite unique, I know there must be others out there who also have encountered the unexplainable. I'm sure many are alive now and even more are yet to be born. And perhaps they will find comfort and maybe even be able to answer some of their own questions due to me keeping these records. We all have a story to tell, and I'm proud to say this is mine. All I know is that I know nothing, and I have more questions than answers. The truth does not fear investigation. In fact, I welcome it. Never give in. Never give in. Never, never, never. In nothing, great or small, large or petty, never give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. Never yield to force. Never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. Born and raised in Perth, West Australia, I attended South Thornley Primary School. Here I made friends while trying to the best of my ability to apply myself inside the classroom to obtain an adequate education. Above all else, it was here where I would think about my future and what I intended to do with myself once leaving school. They say life is full of surprises and never in a million years could I have guessed who or what was waiting to meet me in the not too distant future. After getting into trouble with the law, I spent a year locked up for my crimes. When I had just reached the age of 26 years old, I was given back my freedom and released from prison. Not even a month had passed before I began working with a lively bunch of fellows who instantly became friends for life. <laughs> Joel Sullivan and the one and only Justin Darby, who was actually our employer at the time. The year was 2012 and there I was, making good money for doing a job I enjoyed immensely. While working with lads, I'd run into a burning building to save. When I received news in late September that my beloved family member Carl had passed away mysteriously within an American military base whilst on tour in Afghanistan. Carl was a remarkable individual who brought great honour to our family and made us all extremely proud. He was a soldier of the SBS, who are even more secretive and elite than the renowned SAS. As I just mentioned, he died mysteriously, and out of respect for my family, I will not speculate on what I believe actually happened to him. At the time, it was a devastating loss which deeply hurt all my family, though due to my particular ad admiration of Carl, I took the news quite badly and was very upset. Eight years has now passed by and I still am brought to tears when I talk about it. It is foolish and wrong to mourn the men who died, rather we should thank God that such men lived. General George Patton. Ultimately, what happened to Carl resulted in some of my family being blessed with the privilege of actually meeting the British royal family, in particularly Prince Charles, and not just once, but on multiple occasions. Though, for reasons unknown to me, I too was blessed with the privilege of meeting a great power. In fact, an even greater power than that of the royal family. Astonishingly, unidentified flying objects began making themselves visible to myself 
whether I was alone or with other people, and they too witnessed the UFOs as I did. Like a light switch, they seemed to be a part of my life, and they seemed to be following me. It's almost as if Carl somehow escaped from the heavens above, stole a UFO, and began trying to re-enter our reality. The intensity of the UFOs kept increasing, and on the 20th of November, they decided to take our relationship to another level. But don't take my word for it. Listen to what Justin Darbs has to say about what happened. I'm Justin Darby. I've known Rob Mason for quite a while now. Me and him were working on the naval base out at Garden Island together for a while, and we're doing caches as well after work. We were driving down Tongan Highway about 7.30 at night, going to a cash job to finish it off. And then Rob spotted three UFOs out to the right, just near Perth International Airport. Mate, I was like, Darby, we need to film this, we need to film this. And I was like, all right, all right, I'll film it, I'll film it. But we can't stay here too long because I need to get to this job. My missus is cracking the sads and they were out so late. She was handing me to get home, get home, bloody kids. She couldn't really believe it at first. She just thought I was out gallivanting around at the strippers or some shit. But once we showed her the footage, she was like, holy shit, you weren't telling lies. And, and I'm pulling over, I'm like, whoa, get fucked. And so I started to drive, I'm sitting there filming, trying to film over the top of him on a bloody iPhone, was it iPhone 4 or 5 or something like that? And I was just like, oh, mate, so... This is out of this world, man. Fuck work. We need to follow these things. And Mesa was all on board with that. He started following. I was like, go to my brother's house, which was towards Elton Golf Course. Didn't end up going to see him. So we got there, which is about 15 kilometres away from the airport. As Rob's pulled into the um, driveway for Elton Golf Course, he was a bit excited. Didn't see an island in front of him. Hit it. Ran over it bit of a car crash then we've got out the car Rob's ran off I've just seen these orange light just shoots directly straight up in the sky and Rob's come back all energized and then went to the bottle shop because we thought we needed to celebrate and seen all these people in the car park we were asking them they were like whoa what the hell no we didn't see nothing but that sounds awesome it was crazy Something you know like, couldn't believe it it was like mind-blowing shit. It felt like we were in a dream, but you know it wasn't a dream. And he just crashed the car. Yeah, it was good. I've always sort of believed that there's something else out there. That was crazy. Kimbo was very unfortunate that he missed out that night. Yeah. But he got to watch the footage. Yeah. Oh, well, we all can't be there. Yeah. Maybe that's why they chose us. Them, they chose us. Yeah. We didn't choose them. Could not sleep afterwards. It was just awesome. Couldn't stop talking about it. Everyone wanted to watch the footage. Everyone wanted to talk to us. It was awesome. Oh, everyone was just like, "What the hell?" Yeah. Wish I was there. Why, why couldn't I see it? I'm so you have to be the chosen ones. Because why else would they follow us down Lake Road or Tonkin Highway? after the airport, like, that's crazy. Then all the way to Elton Golf Course, which is probably 15, 20 kilometers away from the airport. They had a good look at us and took off. Like, can you see that one all the way at the back there? Dude, they can land now, the fucking things are out of the way. Are you serious? It's going on this fucking line. After I crashed his car into a wooden barricade at Elton Sports Oval, I jumped out of the driver's seat and took three to four steps when I witnessed something I shall never forget. No more than three meters away from me, one of the UFOs silently hovered above my motionless body. I stood there, eyes wide open, doing all I could to absorb all the detailed information I was receiving from something I had never seen before. It watched me as I watched it for roughly no more than five seconds I would say and I could feel uplifting energy 
going all through my body, which was which was coming coming from the craft before its rotating blue lights got much brighter and seemed to power up before shooting directly up into the sky. In fact, it was so fast it almost seemed to vanish. After having a up close and personal experience with the UFO, I knew my life could never be the same again. Extremely happy, I was not afraid. It was an extremely positive experience. I knew it wouldn't be the last I would see of the mysterious UFOs. Clear as day, the UFO wanted to let me know it was as interested in me as I was in them. And would you know it, I only have to wait another 48 hours until things got even more insane. 48 hours later, two friends and I got together and went for a drive to see if the UFOs were still in town. One of my friends managed to actually take two photos of a UFO picking me up for a joyride before bringing me back to Earth safely. I'm Donna and I took the photos of Rob at the quarry in 2012. Mesa had a lovely experience taken. This is the first known series of photographs that I know and I've been researching UFO ufology for um, a good number of years now uh, that we have where we have the person zooming off and then zooming back, like being abducted and coming back. It's in transition. First known photographs that I know ever. Okay. So that's pretty significant. Just that alone for history on earth. And we are thrilled to welcome you to another episode of our show. And uh, we certainly uh, are very excited tonight because our guest is a returning guest. We are uh, now having a very fascinating discussion with Robert Mason about one of his many experiences where he was uh, actually, uh, I don't want to use the term abducted, but he had an experience where he was he was taken, disappeared for a while and came back. And all of this is on photographic evidence. There's a new video this morning that some say may be proof we're not alone in the universe. If you thought that would be enough UFO contact to last me a lifetime, you'd be extremely mistaken. One of the best things about being friends with the UFOs is the fact that ever since November 2012, I'll see them in one way or another at least once a week, rain, hail or shine. They maintain frequent contact. For example, over the space of one hour, I lost count how many UFOs I was able to, to film just while standing in my front garden. As usual, the UFOs didn't fail to impress and I was very grateful to film two UFOs seem, seem, seemingly to be playing with me as they fool around like two baby lion cubs play fighting for fun and trying to hone their hunting skills and killer instincts. I could spend hours explaining and demonstrating why these unidentified flying objects are not mistaken for satellites, drones or weather balloons. I no longer waste my time entertaining trolls or replying to their pathetic comments. My channel ain't no sci-fi CGI wank bank for children who haven't even reached puberty. My content is for all you special folks who actually think for themselves and are able to handle a full strength brew. You guys know who you are and I salute you. Once again, I'm left with more questions than answers in regards to the success I've had with crop circle communication. I'm not totally certain whether my impressive success rate is due to my remote viewing psychic abilities, if it's more a case of them acknowledging and replying to my psychic requests, or if it's just another way of them letting me know undoubtedly they are, they are always they are always close by, listening, watching, and waiting. The first time it happened 
I was completely surprised. Though, the two times after that, I intended to make contact. Whatever the case may be, the answer is of no importance when compared to what I consider to be the Holy Grail, the Holy of Holies. I find it absolutely astonishing that people place their faith in the mainstream media so much they'll wear a face mask for the rest of their lives and live in fear of catching COVID-19, yet at the same time not even listening or attempting to understand what people like myself have got to say. I think many people would be surprised to learn that people like myself are being completely honest even to our own demise. It's not like we make money out of, out of, out of trying to speak the truth. If the greatest minds on the earth got together to unlock the code in order to being able to accurately read the message within this crop circle, Would be would be the beginning of world peace, I believe, and we'll probably solve world hunger. Who knows? It'd be a miracle. Please let me know if you think I'm incorrect about the importance of this crop circle, and and better yet, if you have any ideas or know of a way of deciphering the puzzle, I'd absolutely love to hear what you got to say.